Well, I got to take a couple measurements on the bus, and we haven't been in it since the last storm, and we haven't shoveled. I probably should have brought my shovel with me. But we're only going to be on the bus here for a couple minutes. Uh, you've seen the doors I made for this cabinet, but I've also mentioned in that video that I have to make a cabinet for this side over here. So it's not going to be the same length because this I want them to stop at the same point. So this will be a much shorter cabinet, probably with either two small doors or one big door. But i got to get this measurement. First, like I said, we haven't been on the bus for a while. i got to find a tape measure. All right, so like I said, I want that side to stop roughly at the same point as this one. And I'm going to use the window rail center here as my measurement and from here to that it's about four inches um if i look right up across here so when i measure on this side i'll start at the wall and go four inches beyond this point and that will be the length of this next cabinet so 27 29 30 31 so this cabinet will be 31 inches so this cabinet here will be 31 inches i gotta mark that down that's what I might be working on a little bit, but I'm not sure if I'm going to work on that right now when I get out in the shop. I'm going to be working probably on the composting toilet, but I want to get that measurement. Uh, so when I'm over there this weekend coming, I'll have a couple projects I can work on while I'm there as well as editing some more videos. So let's get started on that. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about what I got going on here. I think we're going to start working on the composting toilet. Uh, now my brother built one and I liked what he did and it looked like it was working pretty good. Um, but I'm going to build mine a little bit different way and then we can compare the two and see which one's the best So we still have time before we're going to be hitting the road anyway So we can always rebuild whichever one doesn't work uh, the best So this is my idea and it's based off of the sea head design If you go online you can check those out They're like you know four or five hundred bucks whatever But I think you can build it yourself far cheaper um, I'm going to have the crank mechanism in the middle And I have my urine diverter over there I'll go grab that Now I might have to make some modifications because <laughs> this is what I found for a year row. This thing is giant uh, and I have to um, basically with the space I have in my bus I think I have 22 inches and when this is all together like this it actually will fit but it's way bigger than it needs to be but you do have to line up properly when you're using the uh, toilet so your solid waste is going to go here the front half of the bucket because you're going to have a crank mechanism in the middle and then, of course, your uh, liquids will go here, and then we'll have the seat on top of the whole thing, and we'll uh, build a box around it with a 12-volt uh, fan with a constant negative airflow to keep the moisture going out and any potential odors going out as well. So I might have to uh, actually cut this down here so it's not as big, uh, but we'll see. And I think what we're going to do is have this um, attached to the wooden platform so when you lift that up this will go up with it out of the way and you'll take this out and dump it once it needs to be dumped and when you're done you close it back down and your your toilet seat will sit on here like this uh, so that's the plan uh, let's uh, just show you some of the components here again that's the urine diverter or potential who knows it might change um, as far as this having a crank you got to have a way for it to stay centered. I am going to have a paddle at the bottom of it that will constantly, or not constantly, but when you crank it, it will turn on the bottom and, you know, like a little um, propeller, I guess, and have it turn. Uh, but one thing I know that the sea head said it was not good for was putting your toilet paper in because there's no agitator near the top of your um, composting material. So nothing is, the paper is so light it doesn't actually get mixed in. So I'm also going to put an additional agitator higher up on this shaft in hopes that that will help turn it up higher and pull that stuff down in. We'll see if it works. Um, but the plan is, I have this bolt, which is going to go up through the bottom, uh, stainless steel, and then I have a brass, um, uh, basically it's a piece of pipe that's called a nipple. That's going to go on top of that which will bring us up to the size of this roughly so when this is down in there it's going to stay centered it'll be down inside um, why don't i just get to putting this thing together and show you and i got a big wash i'm going to put on the bottom so it stays nice and stable first thing we need to do though is drill a hole in this thing dead center 
So that's what we're going to do next. To go down through there. Now, the first thing I have to do is this little, little tab sticking out here. That'll make it hard for me to center the drill if I don't get that out of there. So I'm going to do that first. There's that. Okay, so I don't want to try to drill the full size hole right off the bat. What I'm going to do is make a small hole first, and then I'm going to use this boring bit and just bring it up to the size I need uh, a little at a time. The tape cuts at a slight angle, so I'm going to go on the inside. Hopefully, I can clean it up. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect right there. So we'll screw that down in. Uh, we're going to take this wash nut off first, but that's exactly where I want it. Nice and snug because you don't want any um, anything leaking down through there. There shouldn't be any liquids in here anyways, but again, you want a snug, tight fit. All right, so I got that up through there. It's very low profile, so it doesn't stick down through any. We're going to go ahead and put this washer on up here. Then we're gonna put the nut on. All right, so I got that tightened down in there pretty good. What I gotta do now is get this on top of it. I actually could get a longer one of these now if I wanted to. Um, and then that's about the right size for this here. So when that's down on there, it can spin and stay centered. And then we will attach our paddle to this that's gonna go around the base of the um, toilet. So next thing is to get this on here. Now this would just about go. But when these are made, they end up with a little bit of a lip on the inside there. So I'm going to take a file and just file that inner lip off real quick. And it should drop down over there relatively easy. All right, so we're changing our plan a little bit. So even the interior of this is just going to be too difficult to get it on there. Uh, I'd have to take that back off, grind all the threads off this so this will slide down over that. And, you know, it's not, a, it's not the best fit. So if I can find something better, fine. This actually will fit in here perfectly and it slides down over this without too much trouble it doesn't have to be a snug snug fix it has to turn anyways so that'll be that'll work just fine so we're going to go ahead and either cut this off this little ring here that would stop the pipe from going all the way so i can slide it all the way in or cut it this way and just use a portion of it maybe i'll cut it on both sides i don't know i haven't decided yet i'll try grinding it off first and see if we can get the whole thing inside the pipe because then that'll give us a nice big area of keeping that centered. As you saw, I ground that ring down. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat because this is lower than this here. And we're just going to force this into here now. That's going to be the next thing we do. So I definitely need something heavier. Yeah, if they're going to bend. I'm just using a board so I don't bang it up too much, but it's going right in there nicely. Rubber hammer would have worked too, just like my brother suggested, but I didn't want to walk over and get one when I had a board right handy. Before you turn your camera off, so panel to the right a little bit with you your can camera. See, yeah, I will. So you can see that's pushed all the way down in there, and that's going to slide over that bolt. You didn't want to walk oh, all the way for that. that. No, well, yeah. That's why I suggested the It's all about mallet. the details, right, Adam? It's all about the details. So now that. We'll slide over that and that keeps that centered in there now we're going to be building a thing up here that this is going to be mounted into as well and it'll keep it centered on the top and when we crank it to turn it it will um have a paddle down the bottom it'll scoop really close to the bottom of the bucket so of course this is all trial and error um but next i gotta build have a, a thing go across obviously this is going to be cut off so that will come up in it and stay centered up top here. I'll cut some grooves in this so it'll sit down on the bucket and be sturdy. And we'll have a way to uh, clamp it underneath this lip right here so that won't move once we have it centered. But of course, we got to cut this down first. Uh, maybe I'll cut a hole in this first so I can slide it on there and get it centered. And then we can devise uh, the system that will hook to this and be able to stick on when we want to and crank it and then take it off out of the way when the seat is closed. So I think the next thing we'll do is gonna cut a hole in the center of this board here. All right, we gotta find the force the bit the right size. I 
think we'll go with that one right there and we can always file it to bring it up to uh, the right size the hair a bit small but that should work so I got it secured in here uh, I got my depth set so I can't go too far and run into the uh, metal uh, drill vise here and we're just gonna go ahead and put a hole down through here <laughs> So that's what's nice about forcing them bits. They just make a nice clean cut. And if you go slow, it's even really clean on the bottom as well. A little bit of filing and sanding, and there's no breakthrough, no rip through, or anything like that. Especially if it's a nice, good, sharp bit. Uh, now you can see I didn't make it all the way to the edge of the line, but also that was drawn on the outside of the pipe. So hopefully it's not too far off. We're gonna check that next. So as I stated earlier, I will have to do some filing. So we're gonna do that next, but it's very close. Uh, a little bit of filing, we'll be get the, the slide down in there. And then that'll be our top piece to hold it in place at the top of the bucket. So I got this uh, very coarse wood rasp here, uh, file slash file, and basically went around this thing the uh, best I could. Tried to keep it nice and neat. And now this slides in there just perfect. Uh, so that's what we want. And we're just gonna set it on top of this thing and see what it looks like. All right, so I'm gonna stick this down there on top of that. And this come down here uh, I have to file it a little bit more and then we'll have to cut this off once I design some sort of crank mechanism that will be able to go on and come off and then you just use a crank turn this and that will turn the piece inside as well and again I'm going to design one to be up a little higher too so when the toilet's sitting on here, this will all be cut off flat. The toilet will be up here a little bit higher. Your solids will go here, and of course the urine diverter will be up here. So, so far that's what we got. So I'm going to do a little searching now. Basically, I'm looking for something that would catch under here. I mean, I can make something if I have to under some steel, but if I have something I can find already made, uh, it would catch under here, be all one piece. It would come up, go around, and then lay flat like this. I can put a screw in, so it would hook under here and put a screw in that to hold this in place. All right, I have to look into it. Ow! Kneeled on something sharp. I have to look into a couple drawers. I found a couple potential things here. Actually, a lot more potential things, but I found a few things to kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about. So, something like this. If it actually curled back up on this side here to catch underneath the lip of the bucket. Uh, here's another one. Here's a longer one. This is the first thing I found. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Not really the right size uh, because it ended up being way too big. But you could something like this to shrink down. But that's the idea. It would catch under that bucket, go up and screw to that board and hold that in board in place. So we're going to look a little bit further here and see what we can find. Okay, so everything I found, this one seems like it has the most potential. Um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, hopefully here. Everything is correct about it, except it doesn't have the piece that would bend up and catch here. Um, but I can fix that. So you see that? So essentially, I gotta put a bend in it so it would go up here first and then come out and go up and it would catch inside here. So I might just draw a line on this, bring it over to the vise and put a bend in it and see what it, See what it looks like after the fact. You can always make another one just like this if that works. All right, so essentially, this is kind of um, what I'm looking at. Now, this one's still a little bit too big. Let's see if we can fine tune this a little bit. But just a little bit more modification. I ended up deciding to, uh, that first bend I had in it, I bent it right over. You can see it's on the inside there now. And then I just bent it here, which, you know, by having that in there, it gives me a rounded top here so it's not digging in up underneath here but then it also it brings this bar right up close against this and now i don't have that big uh space that i was dealing with before you can see there's no space now and then that will this will screw down to this board here like that now the only thing i have to do now is shorten this here because again this is going to drop down onto the bucket a little bit we're going to do that next and then we got to make another one of these just like this to fasten it down so now what i've done is i've measured to make sure this thing is centered and then i measured this way as well and now all i'm doing is putting marks underneath here like this on the outside of this lip and then i'm holding it and putting them on 
the inside of the lip here. And what that will do is give me the area that I need to cut away a little bit so it'll sink down onto the lip of the bucket. That'll also help hold this in place as well as with these uh, clips. So with the two things in position, that'll be good and sturdy. But it'll be removable, so I can take it off with two screws, slide it off, slide this out to take the bucket out and dump it without having uh, this catch any of the debris when you try to dump it. Sorry I didn't show the process, but all I did was take it on a bandsaw, held it upright, and I cut inside of my two curved lines. So now all I gotta do is kind of um, clean out the curve a little bit so it sits in the bucket. I will be the first to admit it's not perfect because I was using a chisel. I was able to get a slight curvature in both of these to help follow the contour of the top of the bucket. I put it down on there. They drop down on. Fairly snug. That alone will help it from prevent it from sliding back and forth and it really can't go far this way either uh, because of the curve of the bucket and once I put these brackets on I will cut off any extra well, it's not going to go anywhere because when you're cranking it's, it can't it can't move very far yeah I think that's gonna work I guess you just gotta make sure you lined up some I guess you lined up I suppose find out first thing you use it if you take a poop in your pee or a pee in your pooper you know, something ain't lined up quite right. But I can see right away that I can cut away a lot of this because we don't want it sticking out beyond this because that's a problem for sitting on the toilet. All right, one of the other things we have to do is unbox this toilet. Let me show you what I've got here. I ordered this uh, online and it is a um, elongated toilet seat, not the round ones. All the ones we have at the house are elongated. Um, I seen and used the round ones. I don't like them. And this one also gives us more length for having your solids and your um, urine diverter in two different areas. So let's just unbox it. I'll put a link to this too. One thing I did get is a slow close and a detachable. So if I want to clean it, I have these in my house. I like them. You can just flip these up. There's a couple, like this might be a little bit different than mine, but you just turn the little knob here and the seat comes right off quickly and you can really wash it good and replace it back when you're done. Uh, so I wanted that feature and I like the slow close feature as well. One of the modifications we'll have to do is uh, find a way to um, either create a seal on this and the upper seat when it's closed or put a, like the sea head has, it has a cover that goes in and seals this area here and the seat is separate. So we might do that. It all depends. 